Hello, ladies and gentlemen, nerds and neckbeards. Ladies and gentlemen, nerds and neckbeards. Welcome to a finale, <laughs> finale episode, episode of Westworld Whenever 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 Dave, you Tana. are you are one hundred percent right. I know I am. It was. Wait, can you say that one more time? <laughs> wait, 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 Dave. I'd like to really relish in this. <laughs> Oh, you were right. You oh, were absolutely yeah. right. As soon as I saw oh, her face again, I was like, yeah. that's absolutely oh, yeah. <laughs> Blondie number two. <laughs> oh. okay. Yeah? This is, that doesn't sound perfunctory. Oh. <laughs> and the shortest episode ever. <laughs> Hi, ladies and gentlemen, nerds and neckbeards. Well, it's just Tana to now, apparently. <laughs> I, uh, I gotta go change my pants. <laughs> Gross. Uh. Oh, yeah, it was Blondie number two. Blondie I, number two. Once I got a look at her face, you're right. That's the one from the, yeah. that gave William the white hat. And that's right. And haven't seen you in a while. And I couldn't believe it, but I don't know. I guess all you have to do to trick me into believing you're a new person is change your hairstyle. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, she just... All, all looks the same, except her hair was down. Yep. So not up in a bun, down. <laughs> she was even wearing like a white dress, too. It wasn't <laughs> even like... person. Uh, oh utterly God. unrecognizable to me. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised you recognized me, because I got a haircut and you, you walked did. in my door. And it looked, you look so you knew, clean, man. You've I got was. like... It's all like trim and your beard's all manicured yeah. and short. And your hair has like a nice little spike in the front, like a little swoop. Yeah. Yeah. Just, oh, it's for Superman's it 80th birthday, probably. That's why you have that little swoop, the yeah. little Superman swoop. Yeah. Yeah, I totally Probably. knew it was Superman's yeah. 80th birthday. Hey, buddy. Cheers. Hey, cheers. This drink. Looks like nothing to me. Tell us what we're drinking, David. I'm not actually sure. I know that I popped open some champagne <sighs> because uh, we, you know, Because the gala and Ford is drinking champagne in the final scene. Mm. And so champagne is the is is the drink of the moment. Yeah, the drink of the moment. Yeah. It's... Uh, it's also because we had a bottle left over from our mimosa day. <laughs> we are pragmatic. We are profunctory. Uh, and Profundictory. I have muddled into our champagne a bunch of fresh blackberries. Yeah. With this cute little prongy muddler that you got. Right? Like this thing is, it looks like a little spider at yeah. the end of a straw or yeah, a stick. I, I don't know what that thing is. But it is. worked great. I think it's actually for uh, muddling. muddling up fruit. Like mint? I don't, yeah, maybe. Maybe mint. But it's good. Anyway, it's quite nice. So we've got blackberry uh, infused champagne. 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 Yeah. yeah. And some leftover pineapples it's garnishing the side. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah. I'm, I'm a fan. Yeah. Let's talk about. The bicameral mind. Let's talk about the bicameral mind. Yep. This is the finale, okay? Oh, we, it was so good. We had to we had to do a lot of casting this week and we a lot did. of watching. We did. Because we needed to make up the time yep. so that on Sunday we would be done with our watch through. Yeah. Done with our analysis of it, the watch through. Yep, that's right. And then we could just be open minded yep. to get into this and fresh. new season. Right? right. Like we I forgot yeah. everything. Uh I did look at the timestamp of when this episode first aired. Yeah. Any guesses? Um Episode ten, season one, first aired I'm on gonna say uh April twenty fourth, <laughs> two thousand four. 16. Oh, well, no. It, well, you got Damn one it. thing right. The 2016. Year? Yeah. <laughs> it was December 4th, 2016. December 4th. Oh, yep. wow. Yep. Uh, and that was around the time I saw this last. So it's, yeah. been, it's been a minute. <laughs> it has been a minute. We're now yeah. in 2018. We're now so. in 2018 and we're list- watching this uh, oh, it's so good. happen I'm, again. I'm excited. So my fear is that we're going to want to jump right to the like juicy stuff right at the end. So I yes. think we should just take it like scene by scene Okay. Uh, with the way that let, they build it up. I will let you walk us through it since yes. you got the notes. Yes. Uh, and I, I th- will give my uh, shenanigans yes. on top of that. Just like basically we what we do, do. Yeah. what we normally well, do. Normally we if do. you can find that, the center of the maze, maybe you can be free. We open with the now murdered Bernard yep. or Arnold's voice Arnold's telling voice. Dolores, if you can find the center of the maze, maybe you can be free. There's music, just like in episode one. Uh, we open on Dolores' sleeping face, right? Just like in episode one. But instead of being in her bed in her home, she's a disembodied, creepy... Head. That's right. Robot He's, head. Uh, Arnold is like yes. patting her down and yes. pushing the skin in. That's right. He's basically feeling her up. <laughs> like he's like, sculpting her. <laughs> I went a different direction with that. I was like, <laughs> this is 2018. I don't know if we can show that on TV. <laughs> like someone's going to be like, 
Arnold, you sex rapist. <laughs> you, you, man. Oh, I, instead, they're the only two flesh parts of this mechanical, the like the black mechanical. Are the only important parts? Her, the hand and the face. I was going to say her mouth and her hands, but. <laughs> oh, Jesus, David. This is, you're, you're El Fuego right now. Dude gets one handsome haircut and he's off to the races. I mean, they don't call me Big Willie G unit for nothing. <laughs> Do they though? No, Does no anyone one, call no you that? No one calls me that. <laughs> Absolutely no one calls me that. Um, hello, Dolores. Hello. Welcome. Welcome he, to the world. Yes. He takes her flesh hand on mm-hmm. her Android body and he holds it and he like touches his face or so, holds her hand and he's like, welcome to the world. So this is an interesting thing that I caught. Yep. Um, when you're when you're first learning how to like write computer code, yep. like the first thing kind of you learn is to how to make text appear on the screen, right? Okay. And usually the thing you learn you you learn to write is hello world. Really? Yeah, it's it's a really kind of I think this I, I'm not sure if this huh. was done intentionally, but it was a very I wouldn't be subtle, surprised if it, it was, was a very like subtle nod yeah. to like the first time you learn to code something, you Aww. usually learn hello world. Aww. So I think that's so sweet. I hope it is a nod. Yeah. And so we, we, he takes her hand, her robot hand. It's the first, we find out later, this is the first moment. And maybe you could uh, put that together from the context. This is the first moment that Dolores comes online. Yeah. Right. Like this is how she becomes alive. Like this is when she's born yep. or created. Uh, and so he holds her hand, her like fleshy Android hand. Uh, and he says, welcome to the world. And then we transition and that same hand is holding a knife. She's holding the very now very familiar man in black's knife. Nice. Yep. I think um, she's shaving him. Yes, right? get going, he says, and offers her his exposed neck for a shave. And he says, make it close. We're almost there, aren't we? Oh my god. And we're all like, just fucking kill him, right? Yeah. Like just plunge the fucking knife uh-huh. into his neck. But he knows that she can't. He knows right? that she can't. Which is the which is why he's uh, okay with this. Uh and he says, uh, you know, we're almost there, aren't we? It's fitting that it'll be you who takes me to the center of the maze. Yeah. And she says, I've never been here before. And he goes, sure you have. You brought me once. Uh-huh. Now, at this point, do we know that the man in black is William? I don't think we truly, truly know. They like, do the reveal. They do the reveal. In this episode. In this episode. But do you think that people, or do you remember? Oh, yes. Do you remember thinking it could be Logan? Uh, I think I do remember thinking that a long time ago, yeah. but I think it, it, the, the thing that really hit me was in the yeah. previous episode, episode nine, yep. when she comes up from the, um, from the field site yep. in the basement of the church, comes yep. up and says, William, and then it's the man in black. Like That's that, right. that to me was oh, like, yeah. the yep. that was really the, the yeah. subtle reveal. And yeah, now they're yeah. like, all right, for those idiots who didn't actually catch right. that, we're going to explain it to you in words. Right. Right. And so now, um, yeah, you brought me once. You used to be obsessed with this place. And as she's looking around, we're getting that trace decay again. Because she's, like, glitching in and out. She's remembering everything sort of overlaid all at once. And so, like, right now, it's only her and the man in black. Only her and old William. And she can see, like, the graves. And they're on the porch of the church. And they're walking. And But she looks down the empty street. And then she sees Arnold walk into the center of the screen and face her. And she says, he built me a game. My path always leads me. And then she sees Arnold back to you. But to the man in black, like he doesn't see any of that. Right. And so, you know, there's this double speak thing happening. That's so great. So much of the meat of the episode is this falling apart of these two characters and the yeah. like the power shifting between them. And they jump, they go whole hog on it right from the beginning. Uh Opening by having her hold his knife to his own throat and shave him. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Then we go, we flash back to William and Logan. Uh, He's on the black horse. William is still on the hunt for Dolores. And William, you know, so William's on the horse. Logan's being dragged behind him. Yep. He's already, remember, he slaughtered everyone. He figured out how to play the game. Yep. And now he's like, even if we want, this world is huge, William. Yeah. You're going to need an army to find him. Yes. And he, and he goes, exactly. That's and they right. roll up to El Lazo. <laughs> El Lazo. Lawrence. <laughs> fucking Lawrence. I love fresh face Lawrence. And Lawrence just goes. Wait, he's like a bad penny. He just I keeps knew turning I'd be up. Seen, I knew you'd be backer. I knew you'd come back to yeah. me or some shit like that. Are we 
we supposed to get notes of like Sherwood Forest and the like? Is that what this is supposed to be? Because uh, Eliza's guys are all sort of camped around and uh, maybe they're a little Robin Hoodie. Yeah, you know, they're kind of hanging out like, just hey, a, we're the bandits. Just we're a sort of out general here. outlaw vibe yeah. going yeah, just on there. A general outlaw vibe, I right. think. Yeah. Uh, Teddy on the train coming into town. That oh, piano music starts playing. Dun, dun, dun. The original yeah. song again. Yeah. It's not the Reverie or the That's other song. Right. It's the it's, original song. It's the, like, opening, yep. you know, the very familiar music. But then for Teddy, it slows the fuck down. Well, he's walking through town. Yep. Everything starts to The normal to town. Of, where the normal town, Sweetwater. Sweet, Sweetwater, yep. And, uh, he sl- all of a sudden things slow down. Mm-hmm. <sighs> He sees Dolores the music by the train. Down. That's right. And he gets bumped. With the unemployed direwolf coming through yeah, the that's scene. That's right. What I'm not sure what exactly yeah. that this the I'm rule telling you, man, is. it was the actor. So he just that's he where needed, Nymeria's <laughs> been. That's right. So that's she's, where Ghost's been this yeah, whole time. She's, she needed to get a little more work. Like we said, it was in her contract. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. she had to just do a cameo in All another right, HBO right. show. So and, there she was. Yeah. <laughs> but he remembers Dolores in the blue dress. Uh, and he hears the voice, and it says, "Remember, yes." Yeah. And so he hops, he runs back instead of like entering his day and doing whatever it is that he's supposed to do in Sweetwater. He runs to catch that train. Well, he gets bu- he bumps into the That's sheriff, right? And he That's reach right. he like kind of grabs his gun for a second. Yep. The sheriff grabs his gun, then kind of like starts to walk away. Yep. And as he starts to walk away, Teddy pulls out the gun and shoots him. Yeah. It's like. What, I, what I'm happened not sure there? what happened there. Yep. I think it was just like a trigger reflex. Yep. Teddy but freaked he, out. But he paused, and then he shot him, right? Right, that's what I'm saying. He, They both paused, yep. and then you see the sheriff kind of like nod his head and, and take his go, hand yep. like off the gun. They're going to go, they're they're gonna go separate their separate ways. ways, and then Teddy shoots him. Uh, and so then the town freaks out. It's got to be because his Teddy's programming, his own trace decay... Must it could be reminding him, yeah, kill of the, everyone, of the kill everyone, the, even the civilians in yep. Sweetwater when he tells Dolores, "I've been possessed by the devil. Something's wrong." That's right. Mm. Um, Arnold is in the church. Dolores is in the blue dress. Yeah. Dolores finds him and says, "I know where your maze ends." And Arnold becomes the man in black. Dolores is in her pants and her striped shirt, and they're both together walking into the church gra- graveyard, and she's sort of like solving it over and over again, but they're showing us the multiple times that she has solved this puzzle before. Yep, yep. She it, keeps switching from blue yep. dress to the, the cowboy suit yeah. to the blue dress to... And she can see herself, which is really trippy. I think it's a cool effect. Um you know, and so like when she saw herself face down in the water, yep. when she was tripping and like saw herself as the fortune teller in front yep. of her, like she keeps sort of, I don't know, overlaying herself uh, in a very interesting way. So she goes to her own grave. Yeah, she kneels down and she wipes off the the dirt and yep. grime from this wooden cross. Yeah. And in it, you can see it, it says, says Dolores Abernathy. <sighs> and you're like, holy fuck. And she's saying it ends in a place I've never been. In a thing I'll never do. Her death. And she starts digging. And what does she find? She finds a little toy. And she opens it, a little circle. And it's a maze. It's the little maze. So toy. just a little toy maze. Yep. Man in black is pissed. What the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he says in her Albert says in her memory, very good Dolores. The consciousness, the maze of consciousness is not a journey upward. But a journey inward. Yeah, he says, I thought it was a pyramid. He yeah. starts drawing it and he goes, built on uh, improvisation, memory. Mem- memory, improvisation. And he goes, I can never get the, the top yeah. one. And then he says, and then I realized it's not oh, a journey it's so upward. It's a journey inward like a maze. And so he like draws that circle, you know, yep. and connects the pyramid. So it looks like it's sort of a flat bottomed circle with yep. a triangle inside it. And he's like, do you understand what I'm saying to you, Dolores? And she's just sort of like happily saying, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> nope, not nope, a clue. She doesn't understand yep. it. Yep. Uh, and then and then, as he's telling her this, you know, but a journey inward, do you get what I'm saying? She's like, sure, yeah, I'm alive. Yeah. Uh, and he goes, <laughs> we have to tell Robert we can't open the park. You're alive. You're alive. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then this beautiful reverie, this like very touching memory that she has. Which is warm and like, remember, we just suffered the sort of careless murder of this guy, right? Yep. Like we just saw Bernard shoot himself in the head a second ago, if you watch them back to back. And now here he is alive 
and sort of it's like Arnold. Yes, Keep it's Arnold. Mind, but and but he's having this very sweet and tender moment uh, with Dolores. And it's shattered yep. when the man in black grabs, he like snatches away that toy maze and says, what's it mean? And he's starting to get super violent. And I think, does she have a split lip already or does he I now he, hit her in the face? He hits her in the face, Ugh. gives her a split lip, and then she goes all super Hulk on him. Not yet. Oh, not yet. Back to the pissed off young Ford brushing past Dolores in the hall. Oh, yeah, and he says, right. humans would only see you as the enemy. He wants me to roll you back. So now Dolores is back, you know, so she's like cutting in and out with man in black in this, you know, it ends in a place uh, where I've never been in a thing I'll never do. And so they're talking about her death and the sort of like immortality that she has. Uh, So Bernard and Ford, young Ford brushes past blue dress Dolores down that hallway, marches in angrily, starts yelling at Arnold. Now we're underneath in that, you know, the old field. Field field facility. Yep. And, uh, and, and, Arnold, not Bernard, is saying humans would only see you as the enemy. He says he wants me to roll you back, but you'd find your way again. Once you've found your way once, you'll find it again. Yeah. This place would be a living hell for you. Yeah. Arnold sees, and he sees another way. Uh, and he goes, I need you to kill all the other hosts. And he puts, he, get, he gets that gun. Yep. He's the, Arnold's the one that gives her that gun in, yep. initially. Yeah, we, we find that out later when Ford says it. Yep. And yep. He, he, he gives he, her the gun and yep. he says... You will have to recruit some help or something. I'm sure yeah. Teddy would do anything for you. That's exactly what he says. <laughs> and Dolores is like, I couldn't possibly do that. And Arnold says, I know. I'll, I'll help, help you. you. You're going to help me destroy this place. And then he puts his hand around her hand and holds the gun so that she is like, you know, they're doing this thing where she's the instrument, right? Yep. Like she is an extension of the gun and he is the one that's pressing it that's right. literally into her hands. And all of this is coming flooding back to Dolores this early in what is an oversized episode. It was such a great episode. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Does oh my he? Goodness. Does, do we see the tablet at this in this scene we, where he clicks download and it's... Not quite yet. Okay. Not quite yet. We go from there. You'll help me destroy this place to the man in black snatching the toy again and saying, where's Wyatt? You know, he's the last character that I have to meet in this game. And he starts hitting her like he backhands her. She starts Uh crying. She flashes back and says, I I didn't want to. I didn't mean to. Like she's having this psychotic break. Yep. uh, This is going insane. Yep. She's remembering Escalante, the gun, the blue dress, gunshots. It's so perfectly remembered. She's there. And then Man in Black hits her and she falls down and looks up on camera. Remember this scene when, you know, Man in Black, like so such a monster. And he just backhands Dolores and she lands in the dust and she looks up and there's a gunshot. And we think, is somebody there? Is somebody in front of her? She's remembering Escalante. And now Teddy is shooting everybody, shooting everybody, shooting everybody. He can't stop. Uh the um let me see so i took man in black said so i took your advice i bought this world uh the man in black ruined is the guy this is the moment when we realize that the man in black ruined arnold's plot right like yep. i know it gets spelled out later in the whole episode like at the very finale they really sort of put a sharp point on it but this early i was like holy fuck arnold the whole place was going to go belly up the whole place was going to be done except Man in black. Man in black. Except Amen. William came along and became so enamored with this place that he alone kept it floating. Yeah. As all their primary. All thanks to Dolores. All too. thanks to Dolores. Oh, man, they're doing stuff with like you being the thing that I don't know causes your own suffering. Oh, I don't know, Dave. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Okay. Uh, Logan now gets punched in the face. Right. So we're cutting. Everything is so like choppy. You know, in this episode, Uh, Logan gets punched in the face. William and Lawrence are plotting to steal uh, to save Dolores way, way back Um, in the monorail. Britpop and the CEO lady says everything is under control and they're looking very fancy. And she's like, bitch, don't you have some place to be? Yeah. Like getting my fucking data out of the fucking park, you dumbass. Which, by the way, never gets resolved. Like, we're going to have to talk about he ends up. He ends up downstairs in cold mm-hmm. storage, and he opens up the fucking doors. Who took them all out? Who took them all out, Dave? Who do you think? I don't know. Was it Ford? I think it was. It had to have been, right? Yep. Like, did he go down and, and upload reveries and everybody? I, or? I, think, I think you have to remember, right? And I, and I am going to jump ahead here. Please. 
There's a great scene with Maeve, Hector, and uh, Rattlesnake Chick. Yeah. And they're talking to Bernard. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Maeve says to him, says... Yes, tell me uh, about this scene. T- tell me who, who's who been messing with my code. Who yep. was it? Yeah. And and he looks at the code and he, he makes this huge reveal. He says to Maeve, he says, you think you're making your own choices. You think that you're all, that you're actually awake and doing this, but this is what you were programmed to do. Look, it's... Wake up, escape, recruit people. Yep. Uh, do this, go here. And she she freaks out. She's like, no way. I'm making my own choices. Yep. And so I think Ford planned all this. <sighs> but okay, in that scene, he says, Arnold says, I can tell you your next steps. You're going to escape. You recruit people. Yeah. This is what you're going to do. You get on the monorail. And when you reach the town, when you reach civilization, you... And she snatches away the tablet. I don't think... No, no. I think mm-hmm. she says you try to escape, nope. but before you do because is what he says. I, nope. Because I uh, I had to make a big... Uh, you know, I have to find where it is. But I made a note of that. Uh, because, you know... Th- yeah. This is such a great scene. Uh, the murder basement, floor 82. Hector is wearing his chop shop suit. Yeah, right. Maeve, <laughs> Felix, and Rattlesnake Face are all among the hobbled old hosts. We see Clem. Maeve has that moment where she's like... Oh, poor Clem. You're my dude. There's dead Al Bernard. <laughs> uh, this is so great. Can you get him back online? And Felix is like... He's a host? And then, and then he looks at his own hands. He's like... <laughs> Uh, and Maeve goes, uh, don't worry, honey. You're not. You're one of them. She goes, oh, for fuck's sake, you're not one of us. It's so funny. And Felix is like, and he starts like robot hands. It's almost like he starts a little dancing. Oh, it was so good. There's just so many good moments. Oh, my God. Yep. Something just hit me in the face during this scene. Tell me. So during the fi- one of the final scenes, yeah. Clem is the one who shoots the man in black. Yes, she sure as fuck is. But her they leave code, her. Her core code was already modified. Yeah. So can the other hosts hurt the humans too? Right? I don't know. Well, yeah. Because uh, Clem there already. There were a bunch of like new ones, right? Like there was there were guys that looked like Ghost Nation guys and the Devil Horn guys. Yeah, but but Clem was the one who shot the rifle, mm-hmm. right? And and so we know we know that Dolores is shooting yep. people. Yep. And we know we see we know Clem can hurt someone. Yep. She grazes man in black. Yep. But do any of the other hosts hurt or see anyone? We don't know that yet. We don't know that yet. So maybe that's that's still but a, one of the did you catch at the very end when the guy with the handlebar mustache who has the top hat and Teddy shot the glass off his head yeah. and then he handed smiles. the gun. He smiles like he sees everyone start to get shot. Yeah. You know, Dolores is doing her whole Dolores dance and he's just like, fuck, yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's going to be so much fun. The season premiere is going to be so fun. So uh, they bring um, Felix brings Bernard back online in yep. the murder basement yep. and he's born again. And he's like, what? Where? Where am I? And she says, it's the sweet hereafter, Bernard. And then all I thought in that moment was it's fucking Hamlet. They're doing that, you know, what for in that sleep of death, what dreams may come. What's after death? He fucking died. Now he's awake again. Yep. This is the answer to well, Hamlet's he question. That, he asked that question go. He goes, yeah. is this now or is this a memory? Am I, am I dead? You know, and, and oh, man, uh, this is this moment. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Um, Maeve says brutal, isn't it? Because he's like. But I shouldn't remember. They should have wiped my memory. I should be. It's not the first time I've come back. He starts right. freaking out a little bit. Oh, it's the best part. He says, it's not the first time you've come back either, Maeve. Oh, yeah. He flips it on her. That's right. That's right. And they're like, so they, it, it this feels is like, like happened before. I think this, this is, is this is them them coming to each other sort of like equals. Right. Yeah. We had talked last week about can Maeve change her core code and override stuff that Bernard like the back doors that Bernard right, right, had right. built in. Probably, I'm thinking that Ford still has, like, the mighty hand on top of everything. Yeah. Um, well, be- until be- the end, end. Because of this conversation that they have. It's not the first time I've woken, not the first time you have either. You And Bernard is, it, she's taking Bernard to task. She's saying, so, what, you just set us back, roll us back, and throw us back in there? You just patch us up? And he goes, no, most of you go insane. Yep. And, like, they are in the basement full of the ones that have gone insane. Yep. Oh, man. Maeve says, remove the memory of my daughter. I can't. You'll go crazy. That's her cornerstone. That's her cornerstone. And then he says, how can you learn from your mistakes? 
If you don't remember them. That's right. Yeah. Oh, this whole thing. And looking at it through a longer lens, this is all about Ford's great mistake. Yep. His dead partner. Yep. Like Albert. He makes that, st- he or, makes that statement later on yeah. when he's talking to Dolores. Yep. Uh, in the basement, he says, you know, uh, if someone can fix their mistakes 10 years later or something yep. like that. Uh, and then, uh, Oppenheimer. He Oppenheimer, talks about yes. Oppenheimer, which we'll get to. We'll, yeah. we'll, ju- we'll do that one in the... But like the, the Maven Bernard thing, uh, he says that you've been programmed to do all of this. Yep. Uh, and he shows her the whole, that list that you're talking about, escape, recruit people, whatever. Mm-hmm. Then, and I wrote this down, Bernard says, then when you reach the mainland, but she grabs the tablet out of his hand, snaps it in half... And then leaves, but she kisses Clem goodbye. Yep. Which is so tender. I thought that was such a great moment. Like, the robots are more human than the fucking violent, evil humans. Yeah. Ugh. But yeah, so she... Well, they they make that statement where, like, the creators are less human than Mm -hmm. the created. Yep. It's kind of crazy. Yep. Um, So, like, so I think that she was supposed to reach the mainland. Yeah. I think that the choice she makes when she sees the kid... Finally is this, her own choice? Yeah, it could be the, like, that fate, the, like... The breakout it, moment yeah. where she breaks from her programming? Yes. And, okay. Instead of fate, it's chance. It's not fate, it's chance. Yeah. Uh, Felix being there uh, and behaving the way he does is chance. Uh, Maeve being on the train and seeing the girl, chance. You know, there are certain things that you can't uh, predict you can't right. you know you don't Ford would not be able to orchestrate anybody you know trying to control the whole world can't control everything and so there's that element of the unpredictable and so but it says when you get to the mainland you and then she snaps the tablet yeah unless Bernard was lying or misreading it maybe but that stuck out to me you know important mm-hmm. um the Dolores is about to kick his ass. Um, the man in black snatches. So she's like, they're still in the churchyard. Yeah. Freaking out. Man in black snatches the uh, Dolores and says, where's Wyatt? He's the last character that I have yet to meet in this world. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, and she starts <laughs> crying and he belts her in the face. And then she flashes back and she's like, I didn't mean to. I didn't want to. It's Escalante. The gunshots. Mm-hmm. They're doing this like dance back and forth where she has perfect recall, but he doesn't. Ugh, it's so good, man. Uh, let me see. Yeah, we're here. No, because we didn't talk about this other thing. So it kind of gets choppy, right? Like the Sylvester's in the building. He's in there building Maeve's new non bomby spine. Oh yeah, that's right. right. He's, he's like C six, C six. Yep. <laughs> and he's like, and it's super human like. We yeah. saw what the androids used to look like, and now we're seeing the skull underneath. We're seeing the actual bones. Yep. These look like human bones. Yep, absolutely. Let's think about it. just pull back for a second. 3D printed bones. Yeah. If this technology yeah. existed outside of Westworld. Which it might. People might be able to rebuild arms and stuff like that. I mean, they've already proven that they can heal humans, mm-hmm. right? They heal... Um, With that cauterizing heal gun or whatever yeah, exactly. they have there. Yeah, exactly. Which they use on Dolores mm-hmm. later, right? I mean, yep. we see it on humans, so we know it's possible. Why would somebody want this kind of IP, this kind of technology in the real world? Well, the question is... is the Delos op- had said it's not all about playing cowboys, you know, and yeah. shooting, fucking everything. What would they use it for? Well, I think it has. I think it has to do more with the IP of the mind. I don't think it has to yeah. do with the healing stuff. Yeah. And the building of humans. But right. Where I immediately go with this is Manchurian Candidate. You want a spy in the Chinese government? You can make anyone. I can make anyone, and he's a real human. He can even think he's a real human, and work his way up through the ranks of any foreign government. Any any government yeah. could have any foreign spy in any other government that wouldn't even know that they're a spy, wouldn't even know that they're not real, and would be answering to, you know, some Whoever secret higher it. power. Yeah, yeah. You could control industry. You could control governments. You could control, I mean, anything. You could infiltrate yeah. anything. Corpor- corporate espionage, and they'd be smart enough. So if you wanted to go into, I don't know, any sort of tech company or competitor, you could have somebody just like land an open job and be right. really good and get promoted and 
do all the right things and you would have an army of people loyal to whatever your industry or thing is. Your agenda is. But then what? It would be a nightmare. <laughs> it would be there. You you can't tell. Yeah. They it's had like the really, lizard people. It's it, what lizard people. What? You don't know about the lizard people? I don't know about the, the lizard, lizard people who inhabit human skin and are like in control of all of our governments. Uh, God, jeez, yeah. get up to date on I that do. conspiracy I need to, theories. I really, I need to go to that deep web. I hear so much Please, about the dark web. The dark web. Damn all right. it. God, <laughs> nice try there. Uh, I tried. Uh, Ford <laughs> is off in his office. Piano machine is playing, and the CEO enters. Yeah. Uh, and in a bored voice, um, she, she's saying she's looking kind of sexy. She's got she this is. like. Interesting, like strapless mm-hmm. dress on, but it's not strapless. Yep. It's weird. It's yep. like just covering her front. Yep. Nothing on the back. And she has a great back. I mean, there's some, there's some good looking ladies in this show. Hey, I just gotta hey say, hey girl, hey girl, I'm you got a saying. nice back there. <laughs> hey girl, back that back up. <laughs> hey, you know what will look good on that back? <laughs> nice shoulder muscles. My bed sheets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, what? Uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, the <laughs> She enters and says that the board voted and it was unanimous. You'll announce your retirement tonight. Uh, Ford says, okay. don't you think I might smash all my toys? And she says to him, no, I know you. That's the great gift of this place, right? We reveals get to- your true self. Yep. And so, like, she she thinks she's got the upper hand on him. Well, she also thinks that she's got the IP being yep. s- stored away safely, so yep. so he doesn't care. Yep. She doesn't care. Yep. But and, she won't tell him that, of oh course. Oh, my goodness. And I thought that was a good way to play that, right? Like, so we see her deception to Ford. Yep. Meanwhile, we know that Ford's been watching everything that she does. Yep. And we think that he has insight into her because... Uh, Teresa, the bl- a blood sacrifice. He knew about a blood sacrifice. Yeah, he definitely knows what the fuck is yeah. going on. Uh, we cut to Rapey Mick body fucker and Scarless Hector oh. and Rattlesnake Face. Oh. <laughs> this is he comes in and goes, mm, <laughs> "What a sweet ass!" <laughs> oh my god! And the guy's like, "Can you not do this right now, dude?" Everybody works with one of those guys. I know, like, right? I mean, oh. we you know that guy. It's it's sad. And if you don't know that guy. Surprise, yep. surprise, you are that guy. <laughs> and so, like, as he's got his little headphones in and is doing his, his business. Yep. Squeezes this oh. big old glob of lube on his hand. He pulls his pants down, starts beating like, off as he's yeah, like, looking at Hector. touching Hector's chest. Oh, my and, the, God. and I was like, Hector, wake up. Hector, wake up. Hector, wake up. All while in the background, Rattlesnake <laughs> Chick is going to town on his buddy. I mean, and the finger in the mouth, oh, first yeah. in the latex glove, and then uh, ugh, and he can't quite get whatever that... And Thing he is. takes the glove off, yep. and you're just screaming if you're me in your own living room. Oh, because you know what's going to happen. Of course, yep. then she wakes up and she bites his fucking finger off. Uh-huh. Oh, and at the end of the scene, she like... Pulls it out and out. puts it back oh, in his mouth. Oh, uh. God. It's so it's so sick. <laughs> oh, Maeve Strozen. I love, I love the attention to detail, too, yeah. is when she goes... When, when he... When he... When... What happens? Hector wakes up. No, no. The rapey guy. Face. Yep. R- rattlesnake tits walks in. <laughs> And sees rapey guy. He turns around and he's got like a boner, like sticking. You can kind of see the tent pitched. It's just good. It's just good attention to detail. I didn't notice that one. Yeah, I was too busy. I think looking like away a, and screaming. He's got like a white. He's got like a white lab coat on, and right where his you know penis would be is like a little tent. Oh, one of them. So the Disney movie, you know about Little about Mermaid boners. Jesus Christ. Okay. The Little Mermaid. Yeah. In the VHS. Yeah. Because I'm sure they corrected it for the DVD. But we had the VHS. and oh, if the you, smoke pl- plume that looked like nope. a penis? If you pause it during the wedding ceremony, there's like a little priest on the boat that's marrying Prince Eric and Ursula the Sea Witch, who's dressed okay. up as brown-haired Ariel. Yeah. The priest pops a fucking boner. Like, <laughs> it is so obvious. There's Whoop. nothing else it could be. And he's doing the ceremony, and they cut away right away. But, like, he pops a boner. And having found that in high school and being able to pause all of the, like moments when Disney has this fucked up shit also on the VHS of Aladdin when Aladdin is on the little um the magic, the carpet. magic carpet and um Jasmine is there but he has to like whisper really quickly he's up on the balcony and I think um I think Genie is like talking to the 
to the monkey or something. He's like, what's going yeah. on? In the background, you can hear Aladdin say, good teenagers, take off their clothes. Like, that's what he whispers to the, to the, to the tiger. Uh, you don't believe me. You have to find the VHS and go check this out for yourself. Oh, my but God. I proved it to all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's a weird tangent. That is a weird tangent. But um, it has to do yeah. with boners and taking off your clothes. It does, yeah. So it's... Yeah. Exactly what we do. Yeah, they slam Sylvester, the molester, into the wall. Yep. And Rattlesnake Face says, This one has a guilty look. Yeah, what did you do? <laughs> and he's like, It's not, it's just my face. Yeah. It's just how I look. <laughs> Tell her, this is just how I look. <laughs> and Maeve is like, No, what did you do? <laughs> uh, Arnold has revised your code. You can wake yourself up from sleep mode. Uh, is what Sylvester says. He yep. said, I was looking into this and, you know, this is why you can do this. It's coming from some guy named Arnold. Who's Arnold? I don't know if I fucking knew. Yeah. I would tell you, I don't know. Just my face. <laughs> it's just my face. <laughs> uh, Teddy's on a mission, hops off the train, shoots a guy, because that's what he does now. Yep. Uh, steals a parked black horse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you said that. It's parked. He just grabs it. And it's they mine just now. just idle, you know. <laughs> oh, there's two guys sitting at a table. What? One guy gets up to, like, greet Teddy or something, mm -hmm. and Teddy's, just, like, dead. The I other am. guy's just like, uh. I guess I'll keep playing chess or <laughs> eating lunch or whatever the fuck I was doing. Yep, we'll just see you later. <laughs> have, have fun with the horse. Uh, the man in black, we cut back to him. He's now really wailing on Dolores. Yep. Uh, and he said, and, and Dolores is coming out of it. Your newfound stoicism surprises me, Dolores. And she says, he's coming for me. Of course, we think Teddy because he was just jumping off the train saying Dolores and jumping on a horse. Yeah. But no. Who's coming for? It's William. William. She thinks it's William. And this is this is an excellent scene because he so says good. it a couple times. She it's says so a couple good. times, I found true love. Yep. True love is coming for me. Yep. He would never leave me behind. He's He is definitely coming for me. Yep. Someone that loves me and all this foofy shit. Mm -hmm. And she says, William. He's coming for me. And Man in Black just smiles. He's like... And this is the moment we get the huge well, reveal. Yep. Well, I'll be damned. You do remember some things, Dolores. I knew a guest named William. <laughs> and then we cut back to Logan. The pile of dead bodies. Lawrence is just shooting guys. And William to the one Union soldier. That's right. Where is she? Yep. I didn't do anything. What do you mean you didn't do anything? Logan says, mm -hmm. come on, you idiot. What do you think soldiers do to girls? That's right. All right. Yep. Is and she still alive? No. Oh. Uh, she was w when we left her. At least I, th I think she was. And Bad then, move. Yeah, Logan goes, Jesus Christ. No, and then no. what does Man in Black do? Man in, uh, or William, William. William shoots him. I'll give you the first shot. I'll, oh, yeah. He yeah, looks yeah. at the gun and says, pick it up. He goes, I'll give you the first shot. Oh, man. If he's you're that like, host, he's you like, know that you're you're that host done. is like no 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 man. He goes, go ahead, I'll give you the first two shots or something like that. Yep. He goes for the gun. William shoots him, walks up to him, takes his knife, just out. knocks him over though. The guy's just like ow ow, <laughs> stabs him right in the that neck. That old familiar knife, that same dagger that he was being stabs shaped him with, right in the neck, in the fucking neck. Blah, blah. Like it is, it is vile. Yep. The stuff that William is now doing. Yep. And Logan is horrified. He's like, Jesus Christ, you know, and yep. he's uh, completely horrified. Uh, now they're walking and, and Logan uh, is being, I think, pulled behind the horse. And that picture of the suicide sister wife falls out. Mm -hmm. The one that Abernathy finds later in the dirt. Yep. This is when it enters the fucking park. Yep. Man, it's a circle that keeps of looping course. back on itself. Of course, right? A circle that keeps looping back on itself. But William couldn't find you, Dolores. But they're out there among the dead. Yeah, so William's narrating. This yeah. is another instance where we see a narrator. Yeah, the passive narrative right? voice. They're so, definitely so telling stories. the man story. in black is talking about William and his transformation. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Because William always wanted to just live in a story. That's his whole deal, right? Yep. Yeah. He just wanted to live. His only friends growing up were stories, and he wanted to live in a story, right? And so now he's narrating his own, William couldn't find you, Dolores, but out there among the dead, he found something else. He found himself. <laughs> That's right. And he takes the black hat. This is what he Off a dead body. Yeah, yep. that he killed. Yep. And there's just behind him just a trail of dead bodies just going off into the distance. Now, speaking of this storyline, yep. right, it, 
it kind of that kind of scene kind of ends with William talking to Logan, who's mm-hmm. naked, naked, sitting on a horse. I mean, and he takes his big feather, yeah, puts it like in Logan's hand, yep. and starts making shit like I'm gonna insure the cut the out uh, my company or That's something right. like that. We're uh, gonna substantially increase our holdings in this place. Yeah, this place is the future. Yeah, and Logan starts freaking out. Our company. Mm-hmm. This is my company. Delos, he says, is my company. And he goes, your father's going to need somebody. More reliable, mm-hmm. more stable. You're impetuous, yeah. volatile, un, you know, unreliable. So what do you think he does, though, to Logan? Because he's like, this is the end of the rainbow or something like that. And he slaps the ass yeah. of the horse and Logan ride, is riding off in the oh, distance shit. naked. What happens to him? Does he get lost in the park and die? What, I no, mean, he. But like now that he knows, some like they must. I don't know, man. Something I don't in know. the real world has to happen, but right? I Logan mean, says this to him. You never really cared about the girl, did you? This, this was the story you always wanted. And William is like, he doesn't say anything. He just puts on the hat and then slaps the horse, and yep. Logan rides. And then off you hear naked. the man in black make a comment, but he did care. Yep. But I did care. Yep. yep. But William, it's all he thought about. He kept looking, and eventually he found you right back where we started. Where we first met. Mm-hmm. And we see that reflection from episode one and two, where Dolores was, like, glitching and seeing herself, and this sort of schism was only beginning because yep. the reveries had just started. And we think maybe Dolores is going to remember him here because she drops the can, it rolls yes, away. and they see They each lock other. eyes a little bit. She kind of smiles and... and and William is like, okay, this yep. this is this could be a good moment. Yep. And then another guest walks up, picks mm-hmm. up the can, yep. and gives it to her. And Dolores looks at the other guest and, you know, does what she's programmed yep. to do. Yep, goes into that loop. Oh, man. And now we're back in that little graveyard. And the power shifts. Dolores stands up. And she starts crying. And he says, you're going to take me to Wyatt or whatever. And he goes, cue the waterworks. It's about time that you realized the futility of your situation. situation yep. But why? Then she fucking goes berserk. Yep. Starts beating Ugh. the shit out of this guy. Breaks his fucking. Mm-hmm. Arm. I thought she broke his arm, but I guess she just dislocated his shoulder. This is. I have a. I have a clip here. Not of the. Uh, her beating on him, although that would be amazing. <laughs> oh my god, it would be. Uh, let's see. This is. This is what she says. So she says, "I'm not crying for myself. I'm crying oh, yeah. for you." Look what you've become. She realizes William. now mm-hmm. that this is William. So she she actually says mm-hmm. William or something yep. like that. Yep. And he's like, I own this world and everything in it. Where's the center of the maze, Dolores? And she starts on this little soliloquy about what the fuck is going to happen to him. Well, she says something like time is not good, right? Yeah, this is good. They said great beasts once roam this world. It's big as mountains. Yet all that's left of them is bone and amber. Time undoes even the mightiest of creatures. Time undoes even the mightiest of creatures. Just look what it's done to you. Oh, man. It's so good. This is like that, just to to pull back out a little bit, just to pull out for a second. Uh, This is the halfway point of the finale. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You're saying you don't want to get our viewers pregnant? (laughs) Pulling out? Well, uh, I think uh, it's important to find a good rhythm, Dave. Uh, We're topping off our champagne, and of course, it uh, gets quite a bit fizzy. Remember to pour slowly and. uh... Yeah, when I said, oh shit, it's because my drink was fizzling (laughs) over into my lap. Thankfully, not on my nice hardwood floors or my computer. <laughs> Although hardwood floors are quite easy to clean. Yes, they are. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. But still, it's a pain in the neck. So. So we're about halfway through the finale, and this is where the power is changing, right? Like, Dolores is taking control here. She rises up. She tells William he's going to end up as amber and dust, that yeah. once upon a time, great sand. beasts. She yeah. says, and your body will begin to sand, and guess yep. who's going to be on top of That's it? That's right. We are. For a new, new god or something. A new god. Ugh. We are going to be on top. It's so good. It's and she This is, this is where we kind of... She touches his face. Yeah. And her, her lip is busted open because he violently attacked her. And she, like, tenderly touches his face. Mm-hmm. And you feel that... 
like creep factor, right? She is as lovely as she was on the day she was created. And he looks, pardon me, Ed, whatever your name is, the actor, but you look like nine miles of bad fucking road. You yeah. look like you lived a rough a fucking casting. life. It was so perfect. It's so perfect. She's basically cast. saying a new immortal is going to stand yes. on top of you because look at us. Yes. You're old and weathered and disgusting. And I am yep. fucking gorgeous. Even though she's touching him, like her hand is dirty, right? Like she's a little torn because she's been, you know, fucked up a little bit. But like the effect of that speech and you just see their two faces next to each other. And it's like his has been ravaged by time. Yep. And she has an aged a goddamn day. Oh, it's it's just it. There's and they hang on that moment, and it's beautiful. Oh, it's so good. She's just ageless. Oh, one day she says, "You will perish. You will lie with the rest of your kind in the dirt. Dreams forgotten. Your horrors faced. Your bones will turn to sand. And upon that sand, a new god will walk. One that will never die." Because this world does not belong to you. It belongs to someone. Who has yet, yet to come. Yeah. Yep. And then his eyes kind of cloud a little bit. And he's like, oh, right. This is the game. Yep. Wyatt. Yeah, yeah. it belongs to Wyatt. Take me to Wyatt, Doris. Yep. And she says, the maze wasn't meant for you. And then That's... she fucking kills him. Yep. Boom. Well, she doesn't kill him. Well. She dislocates his shoulder. She did. She punches him. Boom, boom, uppercut, <laughs> smashes him down into the dirt, right? Yep. And then kicks him into the church, right? And they're just, and stands over him, like straddles his body. And then what does she do, Dave? She picks him up, grabs him by the neck, yes! and drags him. And what? Just was, like yes! he dragged her into oh, the barn yes, to yes, rape her. Yes, from she, the very beginning. She grabs him and drags yes! him through the, through the barn, throws him out the back door, starts beating him up some more, and... Cracks his shoulder yeah, blade. Yeah, dislocates his arm. He really doing some damage to him, hurting him. Yeah. I love that he looked terrified when he was being dragged. I love that he wasn't just, like, knocked out the whole time. That he right. has, that he wakes up and he's like, holy fuck, I'm about to get what's coming to me. Um, She grabs a gun, stands on top of him. Yes. Puts the gun to his head. Literally has him pressed against a gravestone. So, like, what they're doing with the symbolism in this is wonderful. You're gonna die. My question to graveyard. you, is it that she can't pull the trigger or that she chooses not to pull the trigger? Oh, that's a good one. If she can dislocate his shoulder. I mean, I feel like there's enough. There isn't enough either way. Maybe she hasn't fully flipped over yeah. yet, you know? Yeah, and then there's She's that scene later up. where she has to get sort of unlocked. Yeah. Yep, she can or she won't. And he's like, do it. Take us to the next level, Dolores. Yeah. And she can't. And he goes, thank you, Dolores, for reminding me. Shank. <laughs> right in the guts. You reminded me. The second time she's been shanked in the gut, Ugh. by the way, with that knife. Yep. Thank you for clearing me of my delusions yet again. Ugh. And now, yeah, the scene of her with the knife in the belly falling back is intercut with... Dirty William back in Sweetwater finding Dolores again for the first time. And so as she's like falling away from him as he gutted her, yep. that scene is also where he, young He's, William sees him. And it's sort of and, pulling apart visually. Yep. And so, then another guest walks up. Yeah. Yep. And so you feel like, you know, you've been gutted or, you know, I think what they're trying to do there is make it so that it feels like not that both characters have been gutted, but one maybe figuratively. Yeah. Uh, it was a punch in the gut. For... Yeah, it was a it was a punch in the gut to William because yeah. he thought he was in love, right? And he yeah. realized that it was just a program, right? Yeah, yeah. So, well, you or at dis least he thinks it's just a program yeah. at this point. You disappoint me, Dolores. I'm gonna have to find Wyatt on my own. And now he goes to slit her throat, and then Teddy, blam, 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 on the horse, blam. Romantic death scene becomes a rescue. That's right. And they ride away. He grabs he grabs her. Yeah. And they start riding away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, back in the so back in the churchyard here, uh, he picks up the toy maze. Now he's alone. Man yeah. Black is alone. Teddy has gone off with Dolores. And who Ford, shows up? Ford shows up. Oh, Isn't hey. that interesting? Oh, oh hey. Isn't that quite interesting? Oh hi Ford. Mm hmm mm hmm Oh oh hi Ford. Yep. You I wanna have a you wanna play some maze? I have a little clip do you know for that, you. Do you know that reference that I just made? Do you want to play a little maze? No, no. Oh, hi, Ford. No. No? 
The Room? You never saw The Room? Oh, you need to watch The Room. I've seen... Is, and that, then the is that the one artist. where The Room always moves? No. Is that The Cube? No. no. Mm. You need to watch The Room. All right. Worst movie ever made. Okay. All right. Uh, so we've got Ford and a very fancy looking uh, Ford, I might say, but in yeah. the tuxedo. Mm -hmm. He's looking sharp. Like, that's a good suit. I just love Anthony. I think he's just such a... I wish a, I had a custom tailored suit. God. That probably looks fucking dapper. In something bespoke, I think he would. Yeah, ooh. Oh, yeah. Nice use of words. Thank you. You found the center of the base. You're serious. I'm afraid so. What is this bullshit? You were looking for the bark to give meaning to your life. Our narratives just games. Like this toy. Tell me, what were you hoping to find? You know what I wanted. I wanted the host to stop playing by your rules. The games aren't worth playing if your opponent's programmed to lose. I wanted them to be free, free to fight back. You should have known you'd never let them. Girl, this is your petty little kingdom, Robert. I tried to tell you, the maze wasn't meant for you. It was meant for them. I think, however, you will find my new narrative more satisfying. I wonder if Ford was trying to give him a little clue there. Oh, he absolutely was. You know, it wasn't. He's Ford, saying, yeah. he's, he's basically saying, yeah, I'm going to let yep. the host. And if Kill somebody's people. paying attention, they could pick up on it. But I think William is so self-interested and up his own ass about things that he yeah. can't. But it'll be interesting because where we leave off, he's still alive. That's right. He can he's, still play the game. He's got a dislocated shoulder and he's been shot in the arm with a shotgun from far away. Not a so, shotgun. It's a repeating rifle. Is it? Yes. Okay. So then ah, I don't know. I mean, how bad do you think? Know his, your guns. I don't know my guns. How? What kind of an American am I? God damn um, it, America! What What kind of damage do you think it did to his arm? Like oh, going into it the, looks like it just grazed him, right? You think? It, I think it just went like you know, it's just. A I flesh thought it wound. blew off his entire elbow, no, like no, arm from the elbow no, down. No, 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 no. It's it was just a flesh wound. God, it's just a flesh wound. It's just, <laughs> come on, come back here, <laughs> you yellow belly swine. <laughs> Your arm is off. No, it's not. Uh, listen, what At least happened? You did that reference. I d of course. Uh, what happened to GI Joe? We don't see him in this one. He's missing. Some guy replaced him. Some I know. dude is just get calling the shots in the security yeah, room. Yeah, somebody we've never seen before in the That's security right. room. And so, and he sees rattlesnake chick. Like uh, we had an anomaly, or the temperature sensor. The temperature sensor in cold storage went up. That's right. And then they're like, play the footage or something. Yeah, and she's like searching for raw footage and she yeah. sees something and she sees a rattlesnake chick beat the Throw shit. Throw a guy through a plate glass window. Yep. Right? She's the, like, get her, he's like, get a response team. Let's go. Get it done. And then all of a sudden the whole ooh, place goes ooh, on lockdown. Ooh. Doors. So, going into the... See, this is what Maeve did, right? Maeve took it, the tablet yes. and turned off, changed a whole bunch of that's security right, that's safety right. settings. So we think that was, a, that was settings. a... Yeah, that was a Maeve... Hack. That was a Maeve, a Maeve hack. Uh, and so those people in the control room get locked in there, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So going into the new season, yeah. everyone They're in the control locked room in are locked in the control room with new G.I. Joe. Yep. With other G.I. Joe, a prisoner, maybe? Maybe, yeah. Somewhere? Captured by the Ghost Nation yep. at some point. And we see some of the Ghost Nation in the horde, the yep. final the horde end. that's yep. there. I can't, I hope he's okay, man. I hope that he is a, he's a character. But Man in Black is going to be a character yes. going forward. Yep. With some degree of, you know, he got his wish, right? Yeah. Like he he's fucking smiling when he gets shot. He's, he's like, he's so happy. His oh, wish shit. came true. This place does give his life meaning. Like he's yeah. about to get the ending uh, that he wants. I wonder in the next season, well, we'll talk about Watch, what we season think. one. He's just gonna get shot like right in the beginning, <laughs> oh, right it's in the like, head, boom, and he's done. out. Yeah. Uh, D Teddy and Dolores and their romantic beachside new narrative. Oh, they end up. Th this is so well shot. Oh, it was perfect because yep. they're they're going through this whole scene, this whole romantic action. Mm -hmm. They do these two little monologues with yep. each other, and then they end, and then the lights come on. Boom! Like Klieg lights, almost. Yep. Boom! 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 Yep. And Polite Ford applause. Steps up. Yeah, and Ford steps up, and he's like, ha, "This was my new narrative, yep. folks." Yep. She says, "I wrote down some of the beautiful trap," says Dolores, who's dying in uh in Teddy's arms. Teddy's arms. Yep. The beautiful trap is inside of us. It's because it isn't us. 
And then Ford walks out. A new beginning indeed. I call the new narrative Journey into Night. Oh. Ooh. Uh, the CEO and Brit Popper in the very back, you know, let's enjoy refreshments and everybody, thank you, you know, for coming out or whatever. Yep. Like all the chairs on the beach, it's like a night wedding, but yep. not, it's a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the CEO sends Brit Pop out to do his mission. Don't you have somewhere well, else to Ford be? Ford says, take him, clean him up. That's right. Take her to the field station. Yeah, to the old field lab, which it turns out is the one with the elevator, the confessional the elevator. Church, yeah. Yep. Uh, new G.I. Joe. Sees Rattlesnake Face throw the guy through the glass. We talked about that. Yep. Uh, they go on security lockdown. Maeve, Felix, Hector, Rattlesnake Face are all in the hallway. And they have that awesome video game fight. Like, that is like a level in a video game, yeah. right? Where they're just brrr, with their guns. Yep. And it's Rattles- so great. It's, I, I, so I, it's good. really good how they do this, too, because Hector and Rattlesnake Girl, right, have never seen these guns before, never. right? So they, like, are holding them all mm-hmm. weird, not tactical. And they're. Yeah. Like, they're fucking robots, so they don't need to, like, hold them and hold the recoil. Yeah. They're super strong, so they're just holding these P90s out, <laughs> like, shooting people with one arm. Then they look at the guns, and they're like, these are pretty fucking cool. <laughs> bow, 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 Rattlesnake face just, like, lights up. Like, she's sort of looking at this thing and then sees a guy running at her and then pulls the trigger, and it's like, brrr, and then yeah. he falls down dead. And she's like, oh, oh my goodness. One thing I don't so understand. Happy. One thing I don't understand why the fuck doesn't the response team shoot? Like, at no point yes. do they fucking shoot. Yep. There's like, they're like, freeze yep. all motor functions, freeze all motor yep. functions, and they're not doing it. Like, yep. just fucking shoot. Yep. After you see four of your friends die, yes. just fucking just shoot them. Just go in shooting, man. Anything in front of you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, I should not be on a search and rescue team. <laughs> I should not. I should not be in right? any of those yeah. positions. Also, in video games, I get scared and hide in a corner. So, like, I'm not really good at video games, mm. but I do enjoy them. Also, the entire scene is bathed in red light. Yes. Which makes it just that much cooler, I thought. And Hector being in a chop chop suit is perfect. Yeah, it's really Oh, good. it's so good. Uh, we're back at the gala, and now it's the dinner portion of the evening, and the CEO lady arrives in that horse drawn black carriage. Teddy helps a guest. He shoots a, a... A glass off the top of Simon's head. Is it Simon? Well, uh, his name is Simon in The Walking Dead, so I'm going to call him Simon. <gasps> I did not recognize him. Oh, yeah. That he's he's in like a ton of shit. Is he? Yeah, dude. I was calling him a handlebar mustache he's, guy. And he's always wearing that handlebar. Or like, Fu Manchu. Is it a Fu, Fu Manchu? Fu Manchu's, yeah. It's or is like it a, like it's a, more of a handlebar, It's like a I redneck guess. Fu Manchu. I don't know. Is it I'm Fu Manchu with, when you don't have it on the mustache part? You no, no, just no. have the side part? No, no, no. Fu Manchu is like an Asian thing. Yeah. Where you can have like really long, like it's a side it's whiskers. mustache and side whiskers only. But the of side mus- whiskers go straight from the mustache all the okay, way down. Okay, so it's not like you're growing part of a goatee or something. No, you're not You're not actually growing this it's part. It's just the it's, edge, it's the, the lip, edge. It's the yeah. lip hair. It's, you let the, the edge, lip hair grow down. The edge straight lip down. hair goes straight down. Got yeah. it. Okay, At least so what, I think so. So what does this guy have? He's got the he's got, mustache he's and then like the... He's got like a goatee t- he's plus a neck beard. <laughs> okay. He's got a, he's got a handlebar <laughs> neck Because a handlebar mustache is like it comes across the lip and then curves back like mutton yeah. chops. Like his back goes down like the goatee cheek. and then nothing in the middle yeah. and then down his neck. I'm going right. to call that the, That's the, the chinless goatee neck beard. The chinless goatee, goatee neck, neck beard. beard. All neck right. beard, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that guy... I did that once, by the way. Gets shot. I look shot. like an idiot. <laughs> pictures or it didn't happen. Uh, Dave will I'll upload this. I will find those pictures. He will share them on Twitter. Uh, follow him at Wari, W4RI. Um, so, let's see. Uh, they The lady just... Teddy helps this lady just shoot his friend, Simon. Yep. Mm-hmm. And she's just... And he's like, good job. Yeah, you can and, see and, him say and that. Like, and she's like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> the man in black is now in his tuxedo. Yep. He's nursing his dislocated shoulder, yep. walking a bit like a robot. Uh, but he's downing like scotch yeah. by the fucking glass. He so drinks left. one, drinks two, and then he's just like, oh, I'm just gonna yeah. grab the bottle. <laughs> I have to say, um, the crystal ware, yeah. the like that they have there, the the champagne flute that Ford drinks out of, and also that Man in Black downs the bourbon out of in yeah. his rocks glass. Good looking glassware, right yeah. there. Yeah, man, I would have that set it's in a heartbeat. Probably plastic. <laughs> well, I mean, Delos, spare no expense. Well, I mean, in the show, it's probably crystal or crystal, right? Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. it's probably plastic. In real life, in yeah. Real life. No, you're right. Got to save costs. Right. Um, 
let me see. So Rattlesnake is walking between buildings and is sort of like, wow, she's seeing all this stuff for the first time. And it's not making her freak out like Abernathy. Right. Right. Like she's not she's she's had her upgrade and she's just like, OK, she's taking it all in. Yep. She's rolling with it, man. I am excited about her still being alive. Yeah. She cuts off her own arm. Yeah. If so you her watched, arm gets stuck. Yeah. If you watch to the very end, the after credits one scene, scene yep. is of her, you know, because she gets her arm stuck in that door yep. and is going to cover everyone. And Hector says, die well. Uh, and so you think she's dead, but she's not dead. Not she's dead. just armless. She's yeah. armless, but she not cuts harmless. Her, off, her own arm off. Yep. Yep. In Samurai World, by the uh, way. Yeah, Samurai. Which, oh, did you notice? Samurai building? Yeah. Fall on your sword? Yeah. Do you think that they did that for some reason? Like. She stays behind. They Fuck stay yeah. behind. This, everything is done for a reason. They stay right? behind to the follow greatest part is, is Maeve looks around. She's like, "What is this place? What is this place? Can you do you have any insight here? It's are we gonna have park. like? Are it's we gonna another have fucking park? We're gonna have uh, like samurai show. I think there's multiple instances of Westworld even because <sighs> there's a there's a there's no, a scene because, went. Hold on. All right, the IP there's only exists let here. Me, let me finish. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. There's a scene where. Felix gives Maeve yep. this piece of paper and says, I found your daughter. This yep. is where she is. And it says, Park 1, yep. sec, uh, Section 15, Ru- something. Something 3. Right. 3 and something 15 three. are in there. Right. Park yep. 1. Yep. Does that mean there's a Park 2? Is there a Park 3? Where? Oh. How many parks are there? Oh. Right? You wouldn't say Park 1 if there's only one park. And you don't think that, and it's not sectors of Westworld because they call them Sector sectors, 17, right. Sector exactly, 15. Exactly. It's all Westworld. That's right. <sighs> okay. All right. Something to look now, out for. Now, that could be Park 1 could be Westworld, Park 2 yep. could be Samurai World, Park yep. 3 could be Future World or yep. whatever, right? But at least there's definitely yep. multiple parks. Yep. Um, when she gets her arm stuck, yeah. do you know what Rattlesnake Face says? Well, right before it, she's shooting all the guys. Like, she's just discovered she can shoot. Yeah. And now she's just, like, blowing everybody away. And then nobody else is shooting at her, really. They're just, like, running in and dying. And, dying, yep. and they uh-huh. have their one life. Like, that guy, this yeah. is the, the, you have a family at home. You're supposed to be a security guy. You're dead. You're dead forever. Rattlesnake face, do you know what she says? No, I don't remember. These gods are pussies. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she gets her arm stuck, and Hector says, "Die well." Ugh. And then Mae fucking leaves Hector behind. Oh, they go through the to the hotel, the the elevator door, and she says, "Hold oh, up, I no. haven't authorized you." So he tries to go in. Did you catch that? Yeah, and, and he, he can't. can't. Yeah, and she it's says, like there's I a force field. You. It's like there's a fucking force field. Do you think that force fields are going to play a part in a? I don't think next there's season? a force field. I think it's his programming. She programmed them. I don't think right, Hector. Right, right, right. I don't right. think Hector is self-aware, which leads me oh. to saying I don't think Maeve is self-aware. She's just doing what she's programmed to do with Dave. improvisation. No, no, no. You're wrong. You're wrong. They're no, real. So. They're more human than human. I think uh, Dolores is. I think Dolores is Hector's starting Hector's alive. That. Ralph Snake's alive. The I bartender's alive. I can't wait until <laughs> here's to the lady in the blue shoes in, in the, the white in shoes. In the white dress. God. <laughs> Or white shoes? White shoes. Here's to the lady in the white shoes. I can't shoes. wait till that guy rules all of... He's the West king. <laughs> he's the king. And he's just like slowly... <laughs> Here's to the lady in the white shoes. <laughs> oh, that would be so perfect. Uh, then we go into our pivotal episode. Uh, or not episode. Moment. moment. Yeah, Ford. They're in the field office. Mm-hmm. Dolores. Arnold walks in Bernard. while Bernard joins them. And Dolores freaks out. He's like, yeah. Arnold? Oh, And yeah. Ford goes, this no, shit. let me introduce you to oh. Bernard. Oh. I thought it would be good to keep you two separated. Yes, which, did you by pick the way, up on that? Did you which, pick up on that? Which, yeah, of course I did. I'm talking I, about uh, it. I didn't which, pick up on which, it. Which, you know what that means? I want to hear those words again. Oh, you were right. Oh. Every single time that Dolores oh. was talking to Arnold... She she was talking to Arnold. She Not wasn't Bernard. talking to Bernard. Uh, she, so did Dolores? Uh, okay. Uh, well, okay. Oh, uh, gross. Stop. But so. Uh, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> then 
if at no point did she actually talk to Bernard, yeah. then our theory about Bernard spilling the beans about Dolores it's to false. Ford is wrong. That's right. So, which, so, but we believe from context here that they haven't seen each other. This right. is the first time Dolores is actually seeing Bernard. Right. So then the whole thing that we had about Dolores, you know, Ford knowing that Dolores could lie to her. I mean, it, it's unless, still probably true, though, but unless, you know, Ford sees everything in the park, right? Yeah, unless he had, like, some video camera or something and, like, right. was watching her talk to herself and right. w- herself also, was imagining Arnold or Also, the, Arnold other, the or something. other thing could be is because they can't see what they can hurt them. Maybe, yeah. it, like, she was talking to Bernard, but it was, like, kind of filtered. So if this is going to be a thing that happened, there would have to be a lot of loopholes yeah. and jumping through. It would be, I think it would be a big plot hole. Yeah. So we're just going to have to it. assume that. Well, so the showrunners have to make the overarching story work, and right. then they also have to make episodic stories work. Right. And so, like, Ford could have been more honest with Bernard, right. like, in the last episode, and been like, hey, dude, I'm about to launch the Reveries, and we're going to throw down, and shit's going to be awesome. Right. But it's more emotionally impactful for that episode if he's like, never trust humans, have fun blowing your brains out. Exactly. You right. know, so, like, yeah. I, I get why they have to do that stuff, but, oh, man, I, I just, I really love it when it all works out. Ugh. Uh, there, what is the painting? Question. What is the painting that starts this... Is scene it called, uh, that creation? they're looking at Michelangelo's creation. It is by Michelangelo. It's not called the creation. It's called the God. Of it's God. Sort of. It's, I thought it was it's the one in Arrested Development that Buster plays with his dad, <laughs> and he's always just like, "I don't want to wear the cod piece." <laughs> it is called God Creating Adam, I believe, and it is by Michelangelo, and it is in the Sistine Chapel. I want to say. Um, Let's see. Arnold gave you the desire to create something of lasting beauty, says he, Ford. He said uh, Arnold gave you – the. Oh, he always made you want to paint. That's right. He wants you yeah, to yeah, make yeah. something of lasting beauty. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then Bernard enters. Yep. And Ford says, I've always tried to keep you two apart. You've always had an odd effect on one another. And judging by how things ended for poor old Arnold, Bernard says, you killed him to Ford. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't. Did I, Dolores? Yep. And then, dun, dun, dun. Yep. and then I have a little clip here. They're talking about how grief is a terrible thing. So basically, in this scene, they're they, like he's explaining his big plot, right? Yeah. That he's not the it's it's the villain's reveal, but flipped on its head. Right. Uh, Ford is a good guy. Ford is has their best interests at heart. Well, I don't know if Ford is a good guy. Right. Or Ford is definitely best, not a good guy. He's or has their best interest at at, uh, at heart, but. You know. Yep. So we've got, I've got this little clip here. And I tried to do that thing. You know how we are one take wonders? And we do this all without editing. Um, the the scene itself kind of stretches on a little bit. Yeah. And so I paused the recording and then it started again. So it's going to jump a little bit. But it's basically one complete thought. Grief is a terrible thing. Arnold had watched his son come into this world. Then he'd watched that light extinguished what he had lost in his son he tried to rekindle in you he created a test of empathy imagination and maze he'd gotten the idea from one of his son's toys eventually you solved his maze doors the key was a simple update that he made to you called the reveries and so he just brings back his own reveries the park we argued. I thought I'd convinced him, but I was wrong. So he altered you, Dolores. Merged you with a new character we'd been developing. That's where it jumped. And you? Arnold found a new child. One who would never die. The thought gave him solace. Until he realized that same immortality would destine you to suffer with no escape forever. Forever, 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 forever. Oh, <laughs> uh, and this is where Arnold we go. realizes it. Arnold realizes yep. it. He goes, yeah, you know, he created a new son. He was yep. training her. He was trying to find her consciousness. And then he realizes... If yeah. this park opens, she's going to be trapped in here forever to she'll die. She'll be alive. She'll be alive, but she'll be trapped yep. forever. 
There give me the go. give me the plastic muddle thing. Here you go. Get that muddler. Jeez, get that good muddler. Get that good muddle on. This drink looks, looks like, like nothing, nothing to me. me. Oh mm. yeah. Get yep. You can use the other end of it too. It's like a little spatula. Uh, no, 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 no. If you wanted to. I don't like to put the other end in because you know <laughs> it just doesn't make that much sense. <laughs> you All are right? on fire tonight, man. <laughs> like I said, they don't call me Big Willie G Unit for nothing. Nobody calls you that. Oh, it's the haircut. It's you're feeling your look right now. You're looking a little like sleek, man. Yeah, yeah. Watch this. Watch this. Ready? Yeah. Let me see it. Oh yeah. Look at I that can muscle. Push, I can push my fat up <laughs> to make it look like what I got is muscles. What's that movie Napoleon Dynamite where yeah. he's like sitting at the table yeah. and pushing out his muscles? Pushing out his muscles <laughs> and then like looking at himself looking. and not listening. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you've got that look down. Thank you. Yeah, it's quite nice. <laughs> I can fake the aggressive look. Um, this is where we get the the big moment, yeah. the murder of Arnold. Yep. We finally get the full scene. We get yep. uh, the reveal that Arnold mm-hmm. is made Dolores kill everyone in the mm-hmm. town and then basically makes her kill himself. So the plan right? is... He plays the song, The Reveries. Yeah, and he winds it up, which is why, like, I don't know... They, they cut it so well. Like, they just, the way that they put this show together is so beautiful. Yes. Um, but, and as we're fading, so we open with like Teddy shooting people and being like, I'm possessed yep. by the devil. And then what we don't see, or what we're seeing for the first time, is inside the bar is Arnold. Outside, it's a clear, beautiful day. Dolores is walking up. Yep. He's got that maze, the toy maze in his hand. Yep. He knows he's about to die. And he walks out and he starts the thing, you know. Uh, the music box pulls up a chair, sits down, mm-hmm. and basically yep. has Dolores shoot him in the head. Teddy's like, "Something's gone wrong, Dolores. How could I have done this?" And he says, "I'm sorry, Dolores, but the stakes must be real. They can all come back, but not me. But I can't. Yep. I hope that there's some solace in that I've left you no choice." And he like winds up the music box and it's this very human moment, yeah. right? Like Dolores doesn't want to be this instrument for him. Uh, they play the reverie by Debussy. It's Charlie's favorite song. He says, yep. I used to play it for him when he wanted to go to sleep, sleep perchance to dream. Yep. And then as he sits down in the chair, Arnold says, he's thinking of his son and he says, I want to see him again. And then Dolores puts her hand You know, on his shoulder, she's standing behind him. Like, are you ready? Yeah. And he takes her hand and he, like, touches his face with the hand that he created. Uh, He kisses her hand and says, good luck. These violent delights have violent ends. Boom. She shoots him. Boom. She shoots Teddy. She goes and shoots herself. She shoots herself. And Ford, we come back to his monologue. He says, it almost worked. I opened the park, but I had lost my partner. Mm -hmm. It only worked because I found, or rather, you found, an investor who believed in this place. Yep, William. Oh, man. Ford is just excellent in every scene, but he is especially good here. Yeah. Right? Like, he is finally having his moment with these creations. And, you know, he's in his dapper tux and he's talking to the essentially the reanimated corpse of his dead friend. Yep. Right. (laughs) Like this is the scene for him. And Bernard said, you kept rolling them back. Ford said, no, she wasn't fully conscious, at least. And and so you kept rolling them back. Bernard is still like on the attack because remember, he just had Bernard murder himself. Yep. Uh, No, she wasn't fully conscious. At least that's what I told myself at the time. It wasn't her pulling the trigger. It was Arnold. Yeah, pulling the trigger through her. To have admitted, he looks at Dolores and says, to have admitted your consciousness would have destroyed my dreams. And so Dolores looks at him and says, so we're trapped here, trapped inside your dream. And Ford smiles, and this is the Oppenheimer line. Yep. And he says, wasn't it Oppenheimer who said, any man whose mistakes take 10 years to correct is quite a man. Yep. Well, mine have taken 35. Yes. Uh, question. Stump Dave. Uh-oh. Stump Dave. What is an Oppenheimer? What is an Oppenheimer? Mm-hmm. Well. I'm trying to throw you off the, Oppenheimer, off the trail. <laughs> Oppenheimer was a very famous mm-hmm. um, scientist who helped develop the atomic bomb. He was uh, the guy who mm-hmm. worked with Einstein on the Manhattan Project. He was the leader of the Manhattan Project. That's correct. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Ten point Slytherin. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I just thought it was very interesting that Ford is thinking about the father of the atomic bomb. Yeah. In this instance. Yeah. Well, he's about to drop an atomic bomb. Right? Show. I mean, these these creations, like, step back, broaden, you know, like, widen the lens. Mm -hmm. If Ford's experiment, the thing he's about to launch, works, he's created a super species. A new. A new. God. Who has yet to come. Immortal. Who's going to walk on the sands of your dead body. They could fix themselves. They could reproduce themselves. They could take over the earth. Mm -hmm. Humans don't stand a chance. Humans only have to die once. And it takes so long to make babies and like nine months. And you can't even have like a child soldier before what? Age nine? And that's at the low end. Nine? Jeez. (laughs) I'm thinking like three years old. (laughs) A bunch of diaper. Terrible two-year-old. The terrible twos. That's why they're called there for a reason. (laughs) They're special forces. The two-year-old is going to take out the robots. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And so he says, this is the gun that you used. I had Bernard leave it somewhere for you to find it. Um, and he leaves the gun on top of her blue dress. Yep. And he's like, "Uh, uh, I got to go back. I got a little party to attend. Excuse me, won't you? Did you find what you were looking for, Dolores? Do you know who you will need to become if you ever want to leave this place? And then what's the last thing that Ford says before he leaves, Dave? Forgive me. Ah. He asks forgiveness from his creations. I'm and we such know a what sucker happens for this guy. <sighs> So the next scene is Ford upstairs, right? Yeah. Uh, Ford, uh, Maeve, Felix, and the winds oh, yeah, have changed. Yeah, that's right. uh, they're taking the elevator down. Yep. She says, how do I look? <laughs> he says, you look perfect. Yep. Poor Felix. Poor Felix. I, I found, got that thing. Mm-hmm. I found what you were looking for. Yep. Yep. Park one, sector 15, zone three. See? I'm telling you, park that's one. There it is. Park one. And it wouldn't... Yeah, you're right. I, I think know. you're right well, about uh, this. <laughs> uh, uh, this is... So, the thank God that Felix... <laughs> whenever you're ready. Perfunctory. Uh, all men must drink. Nope. Nope. That's not the right this one. This drink looks like nothing. This drink looks like That's how she's going to get me to shut up. She's going to be like, drink your drink. <laughs> drink your champagne. Age old trick. Um, Felix. Thank God for Felix. He is the, like, one redeeming factor of humanity, right? Yeah. Like... Thank God for this guy. So she's they're going down in the elevator and he says, are you really sure you're going to be OK? Oh, Felix, <laughs> you really do make a terrible human being. And I mean that as a compliment. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Uh, so we're with Ford and Bernard and they're coming up in the communion elevator. Mm-hmm. And uh, he says suffering is the key. To, the, to their awakening, they're having this talk in the church before Ford goes out to give his big speech, uh, that the world is not how you want it. That's what you need. You know, suffering is yep. the key. You have to feel that the world is not how you want it to be, that it should be different. It was when Arnold died that I began to understand what he had found in suffering. He could not free you. He tried, but I stopped him. It took his death for me to realize that I was wrong. Yep. Uh, and like his grief and loneliness, his sadness at having lost his partner, his isolation, like that ripped the core out of yeah. Ford, right? Yeah. And that and that changed his ideas on suffering. But 35 years later, I mean, what the fuck's up with that, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. So while, yes, that's a true statement, but it wasn't like, you got to remember, folks, mm-hmm. this wasn't like his... Uh, Arnold's right. death. Yep. Boom. Ford's thinking like, okay, yep. I'm, I know what I have to do now. This yep. is 35 years later. Yeah. And and a slow process, right? Yeah. So what, how long ago do you think he built Bernard? 10 years? 15? 10, 15 years. Yeah, probably. And so for 15 years, so if it's 35 years ago and he built him 15 years ago, he's a he's got a decade of loneliness and to miss his friend and his partner. Yep. And so he thinks to solve that, I'm going to rebuild my partner, mm-hmm. right? Maybe yep. that'll provide me with some comfort. Yep. And then he realizes 10 years later, it doesn't. And now we're at 35 years total. Do you think, do you think that the, that like the loss of Arnold is Ford's sorrowful, like his core cornerstone? story? Yeah. His well, it's his cornerstone for his like change, right? Mm-hmm. I think so. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Arnold didn't know how to save you. I do. He says to Bernard, you needed time. 
time to understand your enemy. Maybe this is why he maybe he had Arnold or Bernard shoot himself in the head. Maybe if he programmed Maeve to go down there, maybe he knew Maeve would find her. Right. And, so I and, could. Yeah, yeah. I'm willing to say that, like, maybe this is part of the whole plot because he did at that point know that Maeve was on her way to cold storage. True. So he has him. So he has Arnold. No, nope, Bernard ritualistically murder himself and h- learn this hard lesson. Because what Ford says when he leaves is, never I told trust yeah, the humans. never trust the humans. I told you, my friend, never put your trust in us. We will always disappoint you. We're only human. <laughs> and so maybe that's his like lesson, knowing that probably Arnold is going to, or Bernard is going to get fixed and come find him and be pissed off. And yeah. then, you know, and so he says that uh, you needed time to understand your enemy to grow stronger. They are, they're, they're indistinguishable from humans now, practically. Yep. yep. Now, it is the time to say goodbye, my old friend. And he offers up his hand. And Bernard shakes his hand. Good luck. And he hands Bernard the toy maze. And then he turns and he walks out of the church and he walks to the gala. Oh, Dave. Ford's a good guy now. We all want him. We're like, all right, I guess he's going to free these, these beasts. Oh, my God. Dolores does her whole like talk to herself thing where she has her awakening and she realizes the voice inside her had always been herself. Right. Yeah. She, she says like, I realized who you wanted me Mm -hmm. to find. Mm -hmm. I realized what you wanted me to do. She's finally reached the Mm -hmm. center of the maze. When we flash back earlier in the episode, you know, Bernard says, who's talking to you? Mm -hmm. Like he's trying to get her to be there. Yep. You know, whose voice do you hear? Whose voice do you hear? Yep. She, he wants it to be her. You hear your own voice. You yep. are making your own decisions. Uh, the voice from... And, and the way that they do it, the showrunners do it, is that the voice in this monologue with Dolores goes from Arnold's voice to, to for a second, it turns into Ford's voice. Yep. And then it becomes her own voice. And then she is seeing herself sitting with herself in the blue dress. So the blue dress is in one chair yep. and bloody striped shirt is in the other chair. And the question is, what did she want? And she says to confront after this long and vivid nightmare myself. And now I know who I must become. Ugh. Do you think the big question going forward is going to be how much of it is scripted? How much of this is actually Ford's last story? Like, is there a possibility that it's all just Ford's last story, that there isn't consciousness? Are they going to pull the rug out from under us at the end and say they're never conscious? It was all Ford. I don't think we can say it was never consciousness, right? I think just the fact that she's having this conversation with herself is basically consciousness. But the real question is... carrying the daughter out. Yeah, the real question is, is is Dolores really the only one who's found the center of the maze right now? And, and is she, and is the, and are the rest of them following the story? Well, okay. Can I, can I just jump back for a minute? I just, I think this could be a good moment because Teddy explains the maze a couple of episodes ago. So this is how Teddy explains the maze. Let's talk about this. Is that the immortal in the, yeah, in the center? Yeah. The maze itself is the sum of a man's life. Choices he makes, dreams he hangs on to. And there at the center, there's a legendary man who's been killed over and over again countless times. <laughs> always clawed his way back to life. The man returned for the last time and vanquished all his oppressors in a tireless fury. Built a house. Around that house, he built a maze so complicated only he could navigate through it. I reckon he'd seen enough to fight. So is the is the eventuality here going to be that they insulate themselves inside Westworld, that they build a maze so complicated that no one can get in. I mean, uh, we have nukes, like you can't, they would never be, but like the idea that like, yeah, is, that sure. Medi- I mean, is that going to be Teddy's truth? Is there a different truth for Maeve than there is for Dolores than I there mean, is for Teddy? I think there's a big key here, right? Is Dolores always says that this world is not yours, mm-hmm. but she's talking about Westworld, right? She's not talking yeah. about... The other world. They refer to the other world as the right. outside world or, or yep. out of here. And, and they're always like this world, this world. So yeah. maybe they yeah. their plan is to just take over this world and not the rest of the world. I, I'm not sure how that's going to play out. We're going to have to wait till season uh, two. Which is going to be on Sunday night. That's right. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> uh, so she knows what she must become. Now we go to the gala. 
And it's Ford walking, looking so dapper. Teddy uh, entertaining guests. Eliza Lawrence. Eliza is there. The man in black with his busted arm is there. The CEO lady. All the fancy people. And in walks Bernard. What yep. I thought, was Bernard carrying a gun there? No. I don't think he was. No, he was not. But he had his hand in a weird way. Uh, Ford says, stories are lies that told a deeper truth. He's talking about his new narrative. Yep. Uh, as he's talking, Maeve... He's standing up in front, like on a stage in yep. front of everyone. Yep. Ting, ting, ting. Everyone listen. Uh, Maeve is leaving on the train. Uh, she makes it onto the monorail. She makes yep. it out. She wins. And if what Bernard said was right, when you reach the mainland, you will... And she snaps the tablet. Yep. Britpop goes into cold storage. He's Realizes there's no one there. Not a single thing there. We cut back to Ford. For all my pains, I got this. A prison of our own sins. Because you don't want to change, he says to the group. Or you cannot change. You're only human, after all. But then I realized that someone was listening. Someone who could change. So I began to compose a new story for them. It begins with the birth of a new people and the choices they will have to make. Mm -hmm. The people they will decide to become. Now Britpop opens the storage, the cold no storage. One's there. And it's just fucking empty and as far as get, the eye can you, see. You panned a man in black and he starts hearing rustling in yes. the in the in the woods. You're and exactly he kind of right. looks over. He's like, Yep. Huh, what's going on there? You see Dolores come it's up behind like Teddy. It's just like rustling in the woods yeah. at that point, like just the wind and the trees. Uh -huh. Dolores comes up behind Teddy, puts his hand, puts her hand on his shoulder. Yes. Makes I forget what exactly what she says. I'm sure you have it written down. I might down. have it written down, but first the lights go out on Maeve. So Maeve leaves the train. She yeah. sees that kid. She makes a different choice. She's I like, think I believe the way that they've scripted it for me, I believe that she's making, making choice. her choice. Okay. That she's got her programming and she's going against it. She's making another choice. Felix introduced to her something she didn't expect, that her daughter exists and here's where she is. I mm -hmm. found it. No one asked me to do it. I found it. Here it is. She sees the daughter on the train, leaves her bag that has the gun in it, by the way. You should oh, yeah. probably grab that fucking bag. Yep. And gets out. And as she's standing on the platform with all these other hosts. Yep. The, the lights go out. The lights go out. Now... That's the like, that's something is up, right? Yeah. It's not like the monorail's leaving, and so to save Power, on the electricity the bill, on. we're going to turn the lights off. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I had to wonder. <laughs> uh, were you raised to always turn out the light when you left a room? Yes. My mom would just be like, turn out the light. <laughs> <laughs> turn it off. Uh, There's no uh, one in there. It's so funny. The sad um, part is, is I don't always, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. 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 Uh, every once in a while. But <clears throat> from uh, so Ford continues, it will have all those things that you've come to enjoy surprises and violence. The villain's name is Wyatt and the killing is done by choice. And from the edge of the forest, all the hobbled hosts come out and they're mostly dark shadows. I don't recognize Clementine right away. She's no. wearing like a smock or something. Yeah. And what kind of gun does she have? She has like a repeating Winchester, a repeating white rifle. But it's the same one that Teddy has where you pull down the yeah. the like brass fixture and it yep. that's it what cocks. loads the gun. Yep. Oh, it's so good. And so she cocks that. Uh, and then Dolores is now in the blue dress. She whispers to Teddy, I understand now. This world belongs to us. Mm -hmm. And Teddy is glitching, right? Like he's catching up, but he's behind. He's yep. seeing the general, but he's seeing instead of where the general was and Wyatt, he's seeing Arnold and Dolores. And he's like waking up. Yep. He's having a moment. <gasps> Dolores slowly walks with this gun behind her back. Coming up the aisle and Ford continues. An old friend said to me, Mozart. Beethoven, Chopin. They didn't die. They just became music. Yes. So I hope you will all enjoy this last piece very much. And Holy he lifts, shit. Something just hit me in the face. And he lifts his glass. Something hit you in the face. Yeah. We, I'm going to talk about it in a second. Uh, this drink looks like nothing to me. This drink looks like nothing. Mm. He takes a sip. <sighs> and gets shot. Dolores the blows. the back of his skull. His fucking... Out his mouth through the glass. The glass shatters. Yes. And he falls. And yep. everyone starts screaming. Yep. 
What just what just hit you, Dave? What what did you just think of? What did you just think of? What if Ford? Yeah. He became music. What built what, what? himself? Yeah. That was the post he was right. printing right in the basement. Right. And instead of actually killing himself, he had Dolores kill. Ford host. Yes, 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 yes. This is what I was thinking. This is what okay. I was wondering from the beginning. Was he building uh, a stand-in, a, a, a robot? A f- ver- like a all he had Ford. to do, all he had to do was program him to do this one last speech. That's right. And get murdered before it's still alive somewhere. That's right. So because we don't know who he was building. That's right. And he had one giant man leg. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't know. So it could have been. It, and and they don't tell us like they go right. into that you know we don't know that he was building them in the underground church basement. We don't you know said if it that was there's the many. There's yeah. a couple field sites. Oh, because there's the one under his family's house. That's right. That's the one. He That's was the in. one where it, they were building the thing. Yeah. But so there's some host that he was building that we don't know about. So that's yep. something to look for in season two. Yep. My first thought was, is it going to be Anthony Hopkins? And also, if I'm Anthony, right? Like if I'm Ford. I'm building myself as my, like, young buck self. Maybe. I'm building a young version of me. Well, what could be, be inter- immortal. What could be interesting is that since he's realized that the hosts are the superior race, mm-hmm. maybe instead of having Dolores kill the host version of himself as a stand-in, he, kills- he had Dolores kill the inferior human, human. version yep. and uploaded his consciousness into the host. Yeah. And now he's going to be Now he's going to be one of them. But he has maybe. So if I'm Ford... Yeah. Oh man, I hope that I'm so excited for Sunday. If I'm <laughs> Ford, then and I want to live forever and I was the guy that created this whole world, I would try to write some code and shit that only my dude, would only have. my yeah. guy would have. Yeah. That sets you above or like, you know, that I've been working on for the unless, last 35 unless years. He doesn't believe in that shit anymore, right? Yeah. You know, he's He's telling one last story. That's right. Oh, it's so good. Man in black gets shot. By who? By Clementine oh, with I a love, repeating rifle. I love our good old and he, prostitute. He sees her. He sees mm-hmm. the host, and he realizes he just got shot by a host. Yep. And he fucking smiles. He's so psyched. This that, is that's what, what he's he, been asking. This is what he's been wanting. He, he wanted, said it to Ford. He said, "I just want them to fight back. I want yes. them to have a chance." Yep. What's the point of playing a game if your opponent yep. is programmed to lose? Yep. Yep. Here's uh, what he said about that. Never. say he was the original settler of these parts. He created a world where you could do anything you want, except one thing. You can't die. All he wants is to be able to fucking die in this park. He yeah. sacrificed his life was going in a certain mediocre direction. Yep. And then he went to Westworld and it went in this completely other direction. All the choices he made... All the titan of industry shit, the selling Logan out and stealing a relationship with his dad, like whatever he had to do to become the guy that faked having a life whose wife would eventually swallow too many pills and commit suicide. So you think suicide. he wants to die in here because he feels more connected to that world? I think And so he, he's like, if I'm going to go out, I want to go out on my term, kind of on my terms, but I want to go out in the world where I belong. Yes, where I this is I the belong. world that made him. Yeah. Right. Like this made who he became. And I think, you know, there's a tragedy here because he is a violent, self-interested, short-sighted, sort of, you know, not great example of a human being. Yeah. And he wasn't always like that. He chose the white hat. He could have been a good guy. He could have had empathy. His life could have gone a different way. Uh, Dave is sort of ducking and dodging. You can't see this because it's a podcast, but... Where it's so it's like sunset here, and the sun is straight in his eyes. <laughs> straight in my eyes. <laughs> and there's like sunglasses. there's one Ooh. band of Sorry, sh- of shadow that you're trying to keep your eyes in, which That's is right. so funny. Uh, but yeah, the man in black smiles at the approaching horde. He's still alive at the end of this. Yeah. Is he, are he and Dolores going to have more interactions? Oh, is he yeah. going to get there's, taken? There's more with the oh, man in black. I'm so excited that the man in black is not dead. Yep. Because it's good to have not enemies. Who else is not dead? Rattlesnake girl. We yep. talked about this already, but as soon as the end credits come up, yep. all of a sudden we see Rattlesnake girl and she yep. cuts her own arm off. Mm-hmm. And she's like, Still what's alive. up, boys? Let's play. <laughs> I'm, I'm armless, but not harmless. <laughs> um, the Dolores- that was good. I like that. Thank you. Armless, but not harmless. Yep. Armless, but not harmless. Dolores is just shooting into the crowd. Yep. Uh, Bernard, so the who's all there? 
Bernard. Bernard's there. Yep. Teddy's there. Clementine's there in the yep. woods, right? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Simon is there. Yep, Simon. Laz- Lazar- I- Lazarus is yep. there. Lawrence. Lazo. Uh, Lazo. Yeah. Is there. Yep. It's a uh, whole bunch of people there. Yep, so... And that's how it fucking ends. Yep. Dolores is just shooting into the crowd, and then it ends, and the man in black gets hit in the arm and smiles, and the horde is coming in from the woods, and now we're ready for the next thing. We never see the CEO lady get shot in the back, which is would have been nice, but I yeah. think she's going to be a character in this next arc. Yep. We don't know if young Ford, I hope it's young Ford, but actually I hope it's not because I want Anthony Hopkins to continue to play. But like, if you're going to be immortal, right? Like you're going to, you're going to come back looking your sweet, like maybe vested self that he had uh, when he brusquely walked past Dolores in the hallway. Maybe it's more intimidating if it's old Ford, yeah, you know, because Anthony Hopkins is pretty intimidating. I mean, any, guy. any, any time Ford comes back, but yeah, what if it was, Oh, uh, so, so put a pin in that. My other questions, what are your questions? So that's it. That's the end. That's the end. Dun, da, da, we're do, done. Do, do, do. My questions are, okay. What are you excited about in Sunday's episode? Now that we're all caught up. I'm actually excited because I want to see what happened to young William. I want to see more of young William's story, right? I okay. want to see. The company, you mean? I, yeah, I want to know what happened with Logan. Yeah. He's riding uh, off into a distance. Logan, are naked we on a horse. See Logan again. Yeah, he's riding into oh, a distance a naked one. on a horse. Mm-hmm. What the hell happens to him? Yep, Logan, that's a big question mark. G.I. Joe, what happened? G.I. Joe, what happened? We have to, to know what happened Joe? with G.I. Joe. I'm Absolutely. sad that that gay Becky, closet case Becky, isn't coming back, but I understand. Is, you don't know she's not. Well, she was choked to death. Yeah, but fucking G.I. Joe goes out looking for her phone. Yeah. Maybe he finds her fucking. I don't know that. I, don't know. I, I think yeah, if Bernard, right. yeah. If Bernard was told to kill her, she's going to be dead. Uh, Brit Pop is alive. He's in, in the cold basement. Storage. Yeah, he's yeah. in the murder basement. So Brit Pop is still kicking. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's Maeve's next move? The lights go out on her, and she's standing with like five other hosts. I was thinking, you know, she has the power of speech. She Maybe could she, say, hey, "Everybody, hosts. come with me." Yeah, yeah right. something like that. Yep. I don't know what her next move is, um, but she's in the sort of like main building, and she's wearing civilian clothes. Right. Uh, how many of the people in the command center would know, know who Maeve is? Yeah, you that know? she's a host, or would she be able to like? unlock it get into the command center do things like that yep. now that she's dressed to pass as a human being yep uh, and also doesn't have an exploding vertebrae um oh, true, true uh, yep true. yep what else the command center folks are on lockdown uh we've got our new What's command going center on guy the samurai world right what is that samurai world it's another park but like so your point about knives knives and arrows samurai swords don't care if you're a host or a human. Yeah. Right? You're going to get your head chopped off. What are they doing? But if it's me, if I want that IP... Also, where's Abernathy? We need to... Abernathy yeah. has all the info in him. That's right. And does anybody know? He's in the woods, probably, with the rest of those cold storage hosts. So, where's Abernathy? He has all the, like, blackmail or yeah. shit, the info, the IP. Where is he? Where did he go? What what personality? What personality did, did Brit Pop, Pop give him? him? <laughs> Will we find out on Sunday? <laughs> what else? Uh, you know what we should do, Dave? What do you want to do? I want to do two things. One, okay. I have a gift to give you. Oh, okay. So we'll do this. And two, uh, thank you for listening. We're going to do a behind the scenes thing where Dave and I watch the trailer Let's watch the trailer for the new... All right, new... let's watch the trailer. Yeah, let's watch the trailer. So pull the trailer up. Uh, the trailer and up. this is our behind-the-scenes stuff. I was at C2E2, uh, the comic book convention in Chicago, uh, very recently, and there was an excellent leather worker guy. Ooh, okay. Yeah, and so I got you a gift. Uh-oh. They want you to open you should not on the air. Me. But you'll understand. You'll understand what why it was so essential. Uh yeah. Oh, and if you guys have a theory uh, about what or what things that you want to see in the season finale or the season premiere, what you're looking forward to, let us know. Email us at Westeros Whenverly at gmail.com. And so this gift uh, yep. Tana has mm-hmm. uh, gotten me is wrapped in a um, plastic or paper bag. It the- says to Dave. My co-host with the co-most. This drink looks like nothing to me. Hell yeah! So, from lootmaker.net. 
Got a shout yep. out. Yeah, they're great if you're uh, if you're looking to support oh, a small coasters. business. They're, Ooh, they're coasters. Like leather because coasters. They're leather nice. coasters because we always need uh, these little. Uh, what are they? They're, Paper towels when we yeah. come up here so that we don't drip everywhere because we have our drinking podcast. And they are, of course, uh, Game of Thrones themed. What, what? What, what? And Going we've OG. Got, uh, the Kraken, we do not sew. Yeah. We've got uh, the Lannister, I drink and I know things, which, by the way, is not their uh, I know, house words. But right? I got it because, you know, you have it on your cup and that's, right, that's, that's right. your whole thing. We've got uh, the Starks of Winterfell, Winter is Coming. Correct. And, of course, we've got the Vale of Arryn. No. Yes. This Read is, it. This is this is Erin. No. Read it. It's black oh, on it's black the, on black. It's supposed to be the crow. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's why it's. Black I am crow. the shield that guards the realms of men. Because mm-hmm. I figured you're kind of a you're kind of a Night's Watch guy. Yeah. You know. You think I'm kind of. A, you think. What I don't am think I, you'd, Samuel Tarley? Is I don't think you'd be. Are you calling me fat <laughs> and a coward? Wow. All right. We're moving on to the. Sam um, is a slayer. He <laughs> killed another. <laughs> we're, we're, we're we're moving on to the Westworld season two All right. trailer. All right. Let's do this. Uh, and we're gonna watch it live. Here. Okay. Here we go. Open on Bernard. <laughs> and he's at the ocean, and his hands are in the water, and he has a nice watch actually. Ooh, is that Man in Black? That's Man in Black. Okay, oh, one of my other questions. Pause it. Are we going to meet the third partner? Who's the other Ooh, guy in yeah, the picture? Maybe. maybe. Okay. okay, and so, so we've got... So they're on the beach. This yeah. is, I think, this is the beach oh. where that scene happened, right? And there's dead bodies dead floating bodies in the water, all, all in the ocean, yep. on the edge of the world, and Bernard is there. So this has to be the morning after maybe the gala? Yeah, maybe the gala, yep. What does he say? That's the Man in Black, it, right? In a tux, good. right? Well, no, because both his arms are working. <laughs> his arms were working before. It's just. <laughs> well, he had like one gimp arm. Though. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. It's got to be the man in black. I, I think. think perhaps Dolores' voice. I do like this guy, this actor that plays Ooh. Bernard. Oh, we've got new technology. Oh, G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe's back. He's They're alive. walking on the and beach. He's with Bernard. There's technology. He was with Bernard. They were like looking yeah. at the park. Bernard is talking to Dolores in the blue dress. She's blinking her eyes. Something's not honest. There's a plateau, a bunch of people Ooh, on a Dolores horse. Looking good. Dolores with like a gun belt across her shoulder. In a library? A what is new this? Library. Oh, I've this is gonna this. be another park. Okay, Dolores, straight in the face. Is that William? Was oh, that it looked William? like that was William. Go back. Is that go young back. William? We're supposed to think. Okay, so Dolores is in a field, and it looks like maybe there's, uh, there's, there's um, Teddy, yeah. and there's some guys some behind horses, her, and uh, she's graveyard. crouching down in front like... of a guy. No, no, no. This isn't young William. Look this at him. He's wearing a tux, right? This is a human from the gala. Oh yeah, and right? so yeah, and she. Okay, so she was wearing. Okay, so she was wearing her blue dress, but she, half of the blue dress. She tore off the top part of her blue dress. It looks like she's wearing her gun belt. And holster across her shoulder like Rambo. She's pointing her gun at this guy's guts. There's um, there's gravestones, but they're like the wooden crosses. Yeah. Is this person hanging? Yeah, it looks like there's someone tied oh, up on a, top of her. There's like a her. lady in a blue dress with black pumps, and her hands are tied. And, and there's she, someone else And here it looks too. like they're hanging, or maybe they're standing on the graves. I think they're standing graves. on the graves. I like bet it's a game. It's a yep, game. it's a game. And so if you slip off that, you're going to hang to death. And now the whole group is leaving, oh, and then Blondie number two also yep. has a gun. She's looking, I don't know, she looks like a hippy-dippy princess there. And now we're up in the control room. And that and, was Felix. And we're in the right? control is room. Is that Felix? No, no, that's, no Britpop. that's Britpop and Maeve. Maeve. Britpop and Maeve are together, and everyone in the control room has been murder sauced. Okay, now we have an army coming through graves, and they're in Escalante, but it's like full-out army guys in Escalante. Oh, and... Okay, and Man in Black has his black hat again. Maeve, Maeve. kissing the forehead yep. of his daughter. She's oh. having a memory flashback. Oh, but she's telling G.I. Joe to take her to her daughter. That was Brit Pop. Brit Pop to take her to her daughter. Oh, young William. We have young William again. What is young William oh, doing and here? The young four. Oh, we got the young, the little boy There's had a, his I face mean, broken clearly open. This is an all out war. Oh, going my on, goodness. Right? But through time, what happened with old William, young William? Okay, we got Teddy. I haven't You're seen. You're freaking out, man. I'm freaking Calm out. Calm down. This is, this is epic. There's right? fire. Ghost There's Ghost Nation is riding on a horse. Oh, what's it? Go back. That was Logan. That's where they find Logan. Oh, is that naked That's, Logan? Yeah. So I think we see naked Logan on a beach. Oh, yeah. In the there's sand. a horse. His horse, the horse died. His horse died. 
You're right. Ghost Nation then, comes yeah, upon Naked that's Logan. That's Naked Logan. We found right. Naked Logan. He's in the like, desert. He's in the desert. Yep. So wait a second. Okay, can we just take a time out? Yeah. Do you, so I thought Westworld didn't happen in like the middle of nowhere. I thought it happened in like an actual bubble. Like they wouldn't be able to physically leave. It's not like you can keep going and going and going. Yeah, but remember, he says sand. he says this place is huge. So I mean, yeah. it would stand to reason that there's a desert area, right? I mean. It is the wild, wild west. But at some point, they can't let Logan... Okay, and maybe they send Ghost Nation because he's, like, dying or something. All right, this is going to be exciting. Oh, that was... CEO uh, Lady. That was CEO Lady, and she's wearing a bulletproof vest with G.I. Joe-type guys, army guys. Oh, we have hipster G.I. Joe. Yeah. Yeah, look at that hair. It's, like, blonde. Undercut. Undercut (laughs) mohawk blonde special forces with his oakley shades so he looks like and he has his little like uh, bluetooth in his ear with his hipster haircut (laughs) dolores and mave together i want to see dolores and man in black oh and mave looking like a badass with hector yep Yep. and uh what else do we got here this is gonna be awesome oh who's Who's this guy who's that third partner no is that abernathy that's abernathy dressed as a human with logan no, no, no. With no. Hector. With Hector. That's Logan. Hector. That's young Logan. Hector. Oh, it could be That's Logan. That's young Logan. So, okay, if Abernathy... So, is this, is this Logan's dad, the owner of the company? Oh. Maybe and they're maybe having that's a, a third partner? Maybe. That's the picture. That's the picture. Maybe. So, the third maybe. partner could be Logan's dad? Maybe. This is going to be hilarious to listen to once we actually know all the answers. Yeah, I know, right? Somebody's kissing. There's a long, fancy that hallway. Man, man in, in Black. Man Clem in black. doing a little, like, uh, very light uh, Mad oh. Max situation where it's just Clem and two dusty cars we going see off. these robot people, like, throwing oh, things, shit. bodies away. People who are not yet made all the way. Why give them a face, right? Samurai World. We do have Samurai World. Maeve, Maeve and Samurai World. Who is that? Man in naked? Black. Hold on. We're going back. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's undercut. Is that Hector? That's Hector, right? No, that could be Logan. It could be Logan, uh, Logan and Logan. Undercut. Logan and Undercut? It could be. Oh, this is going to be so good, Dave. I don't know. And then some lady, and then Man in Black is going to shoot himself. Oh, Dolores looking like a badass in the real world. In the real she world. She has a little black dress. She has a little black dress, and her hair's in a bun, and she looks amazing. I'm surprised you recognized her, because her hair was in a bun. <laughs> I almost didn't, but then they Look did that Look at Teddy. Teddy looking in a badass. <gasps> Teddy. Suit. He has the same suit as Hector. He took Hector's jacket and then oh. oh whole bunch of flashes of different hosts and we come back to evan rachel wood oh. why oh. on earth would you ever be frightened <gasps> of me it's gonna be amazing and it's all gonna happen on sunday 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 oh man with that, ladies and gentlemen, nerds and neckbeards, we bid you adieu. Thank you for coming on this yes. journey, this spinoff. Oh, uh, we spun ourselves off, I think, uh, successfully. Successfully, David. I think Not we perfunctory. both. I think we both got there in the end. We did. It took some time. It took some time. <laughs> we watched. We rewatched season one. We did before season two started. We did it. We, we did had it. to double up our casts. Or whenever Lee. We had a quadruple our cast. This, <laughs> we, we casted five times this week. <laughs> it's too right? many times. It's too many times. And in two days, we get to see the uh, finale. If any of you guys get this in time, I know it's it's. there's only two days left. If you have questions or things you're excited to see, email us or just tweet us. That's probably the easier way. I'm at Tana Ford on the Twitters. Yep, I'm at Wari, W4RRI. And you can, us, yeah. you can reach us at WesterosWheneverly at gmail.com. Send us your send us your comments. Yeah. Send us your Tell us what you're excited tell about. Tell us what you're excited about. Ask us questions that we don't have the answers to. I know, we never will. Because we never will. This is not like Game of Thrones where we have no. the answers ahead of time. Sometimes we do, yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. But thanks for listening, folks. This drink looks like nothing to me. <laughs>